Okay, in the last podcast, I showed you guys, oops, i got to get rid of this. In the last pod, podcast, I showed you guys how to make one or two cars, right? Um, to make another car here, you would do car my car, and then you'd say my car one. And then over here, you'd add a couple more cars. My car one. Move and display, right? And then you'd have to instantiate another car here. Right? So my car one equals new car. Now we'll have two cars. And I believe that we did this in the last part. You don't have to touch the class at all because you're just replicating more of them. We did this, and then we noticed that the cars were on top of each other, and that's because they're both starting at the same position and they have the same velocity. So we decided that, oh, well, let's, let's give a I, I had asked you guys to maybe make a second position, a position, a Y position, and then maybe we had random velocity. And maybe you can have a random position and stuff too. So today what I'm going to show you guys is a couple of things. One, this first podcast is going to talk about using P vectors instead of floats. A P vector is like a little array of floats, and it's great because it has an X and a Y and can even have a Z if you want. So what we're going to do here is convert float here to P vector. It's a different type. We're gonna, so now we'll have our position will be a vector. It will have an x and a y component. And same with our velocity, too, because we want our velocity to have an x and a y component, too. So p vector. Um, oh, I spelled it wrong, huh? OK, and then here, when you, in, when you uh, initialize a p vector, you have to do it a certain way. So here you go. Um, for, for initializing a p vector, <laughs> excuse me, you say p vector, and then you got to do, you're going to have an x and a y. You're going to do equals new p vector, because you can tell this is an object too. Right? And then what we'll do for position is we can start it anywhere in, in the whole screen. So we'll do random width, and then we'll do random height. Okay, and make sure that you have ending uh, brackets here. And then we'll do the same thing for velocity. So instead of velocity, like you, let me let me show you. You might you might say something like this p vector. You might say that uh, you want your x velocity to be three and your y velocity to be one. That's kind of how a p vector works, right? I would put new p vector here. So this will initialize the p vector to be going three in one direction and then one in the in the y direction. But it's cooler to have a random also here. So for for the velocity p vector, you don't want it to be going, you know, between 0 and 500. You probably want it to be going between 0 and 3. And actually, instead of going between 0 and 3, you can see random can go between two numbers. Let's have it go between negative 3 and 3, right? So we can have something going this direction too, or this direction. And then on this side, we'll do the same thing. On the y side, we'll go random negative 3, positive 3. Okay, So that'll be really cool. So now, when you're using a p vector, if you want its x component, you do dot x. And if you want its y component, you do y, dot y, like that. And then when you add, when you're going to add two p vectors, it's a little bit different. It's not position equals position plus velocity. So it's a, it's a p vector. Now you do position dot add velocity. Pretty easy, huh? Then the other thing we have to do is position dot x is greater than width. Then position dot x is there, and we have to do this four times. So position dot, oh, I have to change this. You guys can see it all. Position so you have to replicate this four times, and it's position that x is greater than width, then position is 0. But if position x is less than 0, you got to set it to width. So position that x is less than 0. If you get this wrong, it's all over, right? you got to do this really carefully. Position x equals width. Same with the y's. Okay, so for the y, I'll, I'll copy both of these. Maybe I'll remember. So then here will be if position y is greater than height. If it's greater than height, you're going to set y to 0. Again, be so careful with this. And if it's less than 0, it means it went up. 
you're going to set it equal to height, right? Hopefully you seeing me do this will help you. All right, so what we've done here is modified the car class. We haven't messed with this at all, this where we're instantiating it, and that's totally fine. Let's see, see how I fared here. Ah, so now I've got two. So that is how you modify um, your, your car class so that instead of using just a x position and an x velocity, we're using a, a, a two-dimensional position and a two-dimensional velocity. Okay, and every time I run this now, each car is going to have a random, see, a random direction, and it's going to start at a random position. That's really cool. Uh, I wouldn't use a p vector for size, but you probably could could do that. I've never done that before. Usually I have a, but if you were to put size in here, like various sizes, you'd put, I mean, you could put float my wide, I wouldn't call it my width for some reason, and then you put my wide here, you'd have to instantiate it here. Or you'd have to, you'd have to initialize it here. My wide equals, huh, random 20 comma 50 maybe. Now they'll all be different widths, right? You got to make sure you add that in here though. My wide here, my wide here. Okay, so let's take a look. Now they'll have different sizes. Pretty cool, huh? So the cool thing about object-oriented coding is that you've separated the uh, sort of the structure from um, the uh, the amount of things that you're making.